Deep Dive. To dive beneath the surface and into the minds and hearts of your favorite celebrities and pop culture icons. Welcome to Up and Adam. Hey guys, what's up? You're watching Up and Adam. My name's Adam Noel, and today I'm sitting here talking with a very special guest from Bravo's hit series, Below Deck Med. She's my favorite bosun. She hates being called sweetheart. So without further ado, let's dive right in with Malia White. Hi, Malia. How are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good now. This, I'm glad that this is working for us. Yeah, sorry. I'm a little technically challenged. <laughs> oh, me too, except I don't have something to fall back on, like... Um, and boating or something like that. This is just it. So I better get with the program. <laughs> yes. nice. All right. So if, if you don't mind, we can just go ahead and jump right in. We have a few things to cover and I don't want to keep all of your time. Okay, let's do it. All right. So Malia, I just want to go ahead and start a little bit with your backstory. Just for anyone who's get from season two to season five, and they didn't, you know, we were missing you a little bit in between. Can you just follow us up real quick with where you're from? And Yeah, of course. Um, so I grew up in Oregon, but uh, a little bit in Hawaii as well, kind of back and forth. Um, I went to school. I went to college in Colorado. I went to the University of Colorado at Boulder. Um, then after college, I went backpacking and traveled and ended up in yachting. Yeah. You've been around. It took you a minute to kind of figure out where you were going to be. Yeah, I mean, after college, I taught scuba diving in Hawaii for a long time. And then I tried a corporate desk job. And I've kind of just always been drawn to the water. So I'm back at it. <laughs> nice. We saw you on season two of Below Deck Med. Was that experience being on a boat far different than any other experience when you start adding production crew and the cameras and the drama? Uh. Yeah, any boat that I had been on. I was, you know, I came from doing like dive boats in Hawaii, which is like, super chilled and laid back. Um, and then thrown into a super yacht with cameras and stuff. Yeah, it was completely different than anything I'd ever experienced before, but in a good way. <laughs> yeah, and it seems like you've really you know, <laughs> stuck with it. You, you went from deckhand to now bosun, and eventually I feel like it's going to be Captain Malia. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm working on it. Yeah. After my first season, I was like, you know, I don't think I can go back to a normal job. I kind of want to see, you know, where I can go with this. And yeah, that's where I am now. Nice. And, you know, you've, you've been pretty vocal on um, this season, this season especially, about how there's kind of a stigma with women working on the boat or yacht as opposed to men. Do you feel like that, that stigma is just very real on every boat where men kind of think that there's their place on the boat and women should be maybe inside as a stew? Um, yeah, I do think it's still very like prominent in our industry. It's still a very like male dominant industry. And most of the times, you know, if I go out to a bar or something and people are like, Oh, what do you do? And I'm like, Oh, I work on a yacht. They're like, Oh, great. Are you the second stew? Or are you the third stew? I'm like, well, no, actually I work on deck, you know, or, it's definitely still male dominated, but um, I'm hoping that changes. <laughs> You're like, no, I, I'm a badass. I'm a bosun. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, oh, you are? <laughs> yeah. Shocker. <laughs> From season two, we obviously knew that you had that boatmance, which was a little bit rocky with Wes and Adam, which is fair <laughs> enough, but we've moved on and now we're a little bit more career focused. Yeah. Did you find yeah, anyone attractive when you got back on the boat? Or on this new boat? Uh, no, actually. I think they're all, you know, they're all good guys, but none of them are really my style. Um, and they're all much, well, I think they're all a lot younger than me, so that's not really my cup of tea. <laughs> um, and I am in a relationship, so, yeah. Nobody better be barking up yeah. your tree. <laughs> yeah, no, they'll, they'll stay away. <laughs> you know, I thought it was really interesting and almost incredibly uncomfortable as a viewer watching when you went to Captain Sandy and you kind of exposed the fact that Pete was calling you sweetheart and then she just jumped on it she wasn't even like she didn't give you a minute to explain anything it was just kind of like you know what f this like we're, we're fixing this now was that uncomfortable well I think you know I think what I realized is something that wasn't really a huge deal to me at the time because 
you know, I had already addressed it with Pete. I said, hey, stop it with the sweetheart. Just call me Malia. You know, I think at one point he also called me master. And I was like, just call me Malia. Like, seriously, it's weird. Um, and then I think, you know, I was up there eating my breakfast and Captain Sandy's like, oh, how's everything going? And I just threw that out there like, you know, it's not a big deal. And she was like, it was a trigger for her. So I think what that showed me is, you know, Captain Sandy's probably been through a lot and she's probably also gone through her stages of people calling her sweetie. So that was probably, you know, she probably wanted to nip that in the bud. But yeah, suddenly I'm just eating my breakfast sandwich. Everyone's in here and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> okay, let's, let's do this. And then, yeah, and then you're put on the spot. And I think it, it was almost kind of a way for Captain Sandy to see if, you know, you have what it takes to step up in the moment that she's calling him out to be like, no, Malia, like, you know, and you did. That was great. It was a great moment that we got to see from you kind of taking charge, being a leader. No boat, man. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Thanks. Yeah, I think, um, I think this time around, I really just want to show people, you know, how like career driven I am this time and, you know, a different side to me and girls on deck in general. So <laughs> it was exciting for us to start this season with a female dominated crew especially, I mean, in the leadership yeah. roles of the boat. That was exciting because Bravo's kind of switching things up, as you can see. You know, what, what are your thoughts on that? The fact, do you feel like we're kind of progressing within the network? Yeah, definitely. I think that this was a huge step forward to show, you know, girls don't just have to be stews and guys don't just have to be deckhands, you know? There's plenty of male stewards out there. Um, and we can hopefully get a little more diversity in, in other ways, you know? I think... I think it's a huge step forward and I think people are really liking it. There's been a general positive reaction to seeing, you know, just new roles happening, which is exciting. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think it's, I think it's commendable because, you know, to be honest with you, I'm one of those guys that like, I like keeping my, my shit clean. And like, I, I, I would be, yeah. I would be a male chief stew, to be honest with you. I would not be a bozo. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's just super badass that you're just willing to get in there and get your hands dirty because it, like you said, it, anybody can do any role. I don't think it should be gender specific. Yeah, I don't either. Like one of my best guy friends in the industry, he is like the perfect chief steward. Like, and he's amazing. And yeah, I think that that, it needs to be shown. <laughs> yeah, so we got Bugsy back. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> yeah, she's back. Which you were pretty excited about. Mm -hmm. um, not everybody on the boat was excited but you were excited. <laughs> they were in. <laughs> yeah, I was very excited. Um, she, you know, she's been a good friend of mine since season two and to have her back is, it was nice. I had a little friend on board, so it was good. Yeah. Well, it, it actually, Bugsy kind of leads me into, again, I don't want to keep all of your time, but I did ask fans for questions for you. And one of the, one of the ones that okay. I, very top of my list, I got four times, so I thought it was interesting. People come up with their own conspiracy theories for these shows. I, I do have to let you know before I start. I have okay. Liza and she wants to know, do you turn on Hannah? So Bugsy has a position for Chief Stew next season. <laughs> no, um, that, that's crazy. Um, no, I think people read into storylines a lot more than you know what actually happens because you have to remember like, we're still running a super yacht. The only thing on my mind is deck operations and safety. Like I'm not over there like plotting next season of low deck, you know? Um, we're still running it like we would work in a job. We have nothing to do with building story, so. So they think that you're yeah. a bosun and you're a part of production. <laughs> yeah, I would have my hands full. <laughs> I'd be really bad at it too, so. <laughs> you're like, you better be no, getting paid a lot more than you me. are if you're doing all of that. Yeah, right. But no, that's no. All right. So then um, Crystal, Crystal wants to know, what is the biggest yacht you've ever been on? Uh, a 65 meter. Okay. Yeah. Was pretty big. And you worked on that boat? Yeah, it was a deck dive, which means, and I went all through the South Pacific. So, which means you know, you get to take the, the guest diving every day and you go to all these beautiful locations. So it was a dream come true. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a dream job. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. All right. 
All right, and then we have Charlie, which this is random, but Charlie wants to know, do you have a favorite, favorite Instagram or social media account that you like to follow? Oof. Um, I don't think I have a favorite. I'm not on all the social medias. I'm just on Instagram. Um, and I really like following dad jokes and cat videos. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't really so you like a good laugh. <laughs> yeah, I do. Definitely. Mm -hmm. All right. So then we have Aaron who wants to know how much does a deckhand make as opposed to a bosun? Uh, you know, it, it varies quite a bit. It all depends. So salaries in the industry really depend on, you know, the size of the boat that you're working on, the experience that you have, the tickets that you have. Um, but I would generally say, that a bosun will make a grand or more than a deckhand. Okay, and that's that's for the charter. Yeah. Or do you mean do you mean per charter? No, I mean like in a monthly salary. Oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. Like per month, yeah, like normal yachting salary, yeah. All right. Yeah, but during the we, charter, we all always split tips evenly. Yeah, I actually I just spoke with Hannah last week, and she was telling me sometimes the money that you guys make especially within the charters and um, also Sierra from Below Deck Sailing Yacht and how the, the Bravo charters are a little bit shorter. And you guys yeah. brought up on these little film charters. Yeah, they're great. Like, I mean, a normal charter is a week or 10 days, you know. I, coming up, I have a three-week charter. So, yeah, these three-day turnarounds are really nice. <laughs> they like, make your money and go. Yeah, mm-hmm. So then we have um, Drew. Drew wants to know, what is the coolest or most unique item or animal that you've come across in the ocean? Ooh, uh, I've dove with great whites. That was pretty awesome. Um, I've dove with humpbacks. Ah, in the Galapagos, I got to dive with penguins, which was really cool. And oh, hammerheads. Cool. So I'm a big shark person, so any shark, really. <laughs> so are you a fan of Ocean Ramsey? I am. I love her. I love her. <laughs> she, she blows my mind the way that she just, I mean, it, I think it's so incredible how she's trying to educate us while also putting herself out on the line. It's crazy. She pets them like they're little puppies and it's, it's like a yeah. 20 foot great white coming at you. Yeah, I love it. I think, um, I think what she's doing is awesome because people are becoming less afraid of sharks. <laughs> I love Hopefully. it. We have Crystal, and Crystal wants to know, how long does it take to get a captain's license? Ooh, well, that just depends on your experience. So you have to have sea time. Well, you can take the test, and it goes by different levels, you know? So your very first one, you could get pretty quickly. You just have to have sea time, which luckily for me, I had from dive boats, so I got to get mine like pretty quickly. And then as you gain more sea time, then you can take more tests and just up the tonnage of your captain's license. So if you want to go for it, you can at any time and then just get some sea time under your belt. All right. I have two more questions for you. June wants to know, how do you feel about Pete being fired from the show? If you can even answer that, which you, if you, if we have to be a little bit, you know, you can do that too. Uh, I can't, I can't comment on that, but, um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it goes back yes. to, I think, um, Bravo making the necessary changes to progress the network. All right. And then I had to, oh, no, we have two more questions. One, do you think Hannah's having okay. a boy or a girl? I have no idea. <laughs> no? Okay. Well, do you have a, do you have a guess? Uh, let's say a girl. I think Hannah would be a really good girl mom. So hopefully a girl. Yeah. A girl mom. Okay. I guessed boy, so I'm curious. I'm gonna have to come back to you. Ah, okay. Your reveal. All right. And then um, <laughs> the, the last one is, this one's I guess a, a me, an Adam question. If Bravo okay. asks you to come back for a future season of Below Deck Med, will we see you again? Uh, if they do ask me, yeah, for sure. I'd love to give another bosun go around. <laughs> is there another position under the bosun, or uh, I mean under the captain, above the bosun that you, like, is there any more progress you can make within the series that we get to see? 
Um, well, they've never had one so far, but yes, there is. It's the first mate or the chief officer, which is actually what I'm working towards by the end of this year. So you, you're, you know, one step under the captain. So it usually goes captain, chief officer, bosun, deck crew. So, um, yeah, there's another position. Maybe one day. <laughs> All right. We'll so you might be first mate Malia. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> All right, Malia. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time and thank you so much for jumping on here with me. You're amazing this season and it's so, it's, it's <laughs> I think it's exciting to see you kick ass um, and see a female. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. I yeah. hope you like the rest of the season. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm sure we will. You guys are giving us a lot to work with so far. So we look forward to it. It gets a lot more exciting. <laughs> I, I just hope Hannah doesn't punch anybody. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks for having me. It's nice chatting. All right, Malia. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. Up and Adam.